Hello everyone, this is Cameron Snow with Dynomics.com. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing some of our new capillary pressure and saturation height modeling functionality. So let's get started. So this video uh, is going to assume that you've already done your petrophysical interpretation, at least through the uh, water saturation interpretation, and that you're now ready to integrate capillary pressure into your project. So there are a few things uh, that will need as a prerequisite to get started here. The first is we actually need to bring in that capillary pressure data. So since this is data that comes in uh, at a point by point basis, we're going to bring this in as points files. So to do this, uh, you can see I've already got my interpretation here. I've got it set up in this folder. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say upload points and say choose file and I'm going to choose my capillary pressure data. I'm going to hit open. I'm going to give this a name. I'm just going to call it MICP data here. And I'm going to hit OK. And this will quickly upload. Uh, and then the data will be written to a points file over here on the left. So let's open up that data file here. And you see this is a pretty simple file. Uh, we have uh, six columns here. We have API, depth, capillary pressure, mercury saturation, porosity, and permeability. So the API column and the depth columns, those are pretty self-explanatory. This uh, column labeled PC, that's the capillary pressure at each uh, pressure step. And you can see that for this API um, and for this sample, we've actually ran uh, this all the way up to 60,000 PSI. So it's about 125 depth uh, pressure steps for this one uh, sample that we've ran. In this case, since it's uh, mercury injection data, uh, we're looking at a uh, mercury saturation. Um, if you were using porous plate or centrifuge, instead of mercury, it would be, uh, you know, your your air saturation essentially. And for uh, we also have a porosity and permeability. Now, I know you're only going to have one porosity and permeability measurement per sample, uh, and you just simply repeat that on every row. And when you do this, you can have as many APIs and as many uh, samples as you would like in here. So the system is flexible, and it's able to handle however many samples per step, however many, uh, or as many pressure steps per sample and as many samples per API and as many APIs uh, per project as you would like. Um, so that is the basic file that we need here. So let's go back to our petrophysics. Now, um, at this point, the data is not ready to be brought in to our interpretation. And the reason for that is it, this is relatively unprocessed. So what we need to do is we need to process this and we do that via a flow. To create a flow, what we do is we, once again, right click on the folder and we say new flow. And I'm just going to call this uh, process MICP and hit OK. Now this is going to be a, a relatively simple flow to write. So we, our data is in a points format. So we're going to start off by uploading points. So we're going to add a new uh, file here and we're going to say points input. So that brings the points data into the flow. And we're going to select our uh, data here. Next, we are going to uh, choose our saturation height modeling tool. So here it is. Um, you can also start typing saturation height modeling and say add. And then finally, we're going to uh, return a set of points. So this will be points output. I'm going to add there. Okay, so just to review, points input, saturation height modeling, points output. So let's go to the saturation height modeling tool and see what type of options we have here. So here we have options for, uh, you know, our columns and the type of measurements we have. So let's start off, we're going to play match the columns. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say API to API. For sample ID, you can either use a designated sample ID, or in this case, because I only have one sample per depth, I'm going to use the depth column, your capillary pressure step, in this case, our mercury saturation, 
our porosity and our permeability. Uh, this is mercury injection capillary pressure data. So we're going to put in our uh, sigma and our theta from mercury air. And in most cases, the default values are uh, what you would like to use here. We say what type of fluid it is, in this case, oil. And then there are a few parameters that we'll need to uh, set here. So um, we'll need to set our, our brine density. So what's the density of our formation water? Uh, in this case, it's 1.05. Uh, we have a relatively light hydrocarbon in this area, so we're going to put a hydrocarbon density of 0 0.6. And finally, we have the seal capacity. Uh, the seal capacity is really to help you uh, to avoid having uh, irreducible water saturations that are unrealistic. Uh, so often, especially with mercury injection uh, data, when we run it up to 60,000 PSI, that's far beyond the seal capacity of our system. Uh, and so the answers you'll get with respect to irreducible saturation are too high. Um, so I like to truncate this by putting a seal capacity on there. And in this case, I'm going to use 2000 PSI. Now 2000 PSI I've selected because that's about the uh, capillary pressure that you'll get to with uh, other methods like porous plate and centrifuge. Okay, once we've set all this up, we just go to our points output, make sure we have a name for that that we like and we'll hit the run button. And when we do this, it will pop up here in the jobs menu and it will tell us it is initializing the flow and then it'll run it. Now this will just take a few seconds because it's a relatively small data set. So the, I've already ran this um, and I have a, the output here available to us that we can look at uh, while this is running. So you'll notice that I have all my input columns here in the spreadsheet that's already been processed, but then I have several additional columns, such as the laboratory uh, SW, the normalized SW, which is normalized between one and the irreducible water saturation. Uh, we have our SW irreducible, our capillary pressure reservoir conditions, our lever J at reservoir, height above free water level that corresponds to that, our RQI, and our permeability. Now you notice permeability is repeated here. The reason for that is we want to make sure that these particular columns have a very specific naming convention because we're going to be using these in the petrophysics tool and that tool will expect a certain set of names. So if you decide to process this on your own outside of Dynomics, make sure that you have uh, these exact names. Okay, so, um, and we, we see that that flow is now finished um, on its own, so we, we do have the same, same spreadsheet uh, here. Um, so, you know, like, like I said, this is a pretty quick flow, and if you click on the, on the jobs log, uh, if you did have any errors, you could evaluate those there, but, you know, in most cases, this should work as expected. So now that we've done that, what we want to do is we want to go back to our CPI file. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our central drop-down menu and we're going to go to saturation height modeling. That's the module that's being shown now. And I'm going to hide away my, my database area here for a second, uh, just so we have some more screen real estate. And when we look at this, we see that we have uh, a number of um, options here. So first of all, the option to calculate our saturation height uh, on a zone by zone basis. We have things like hydrocarbon density and water density, fluid type, and then we have a number of parameters. And we'll, let's go through all these. First of all, uh, this data is from the teapot and Parkman formations. Uh, it's mainly from the upper Parkman, but you know, I think the rock types are very similar in the teapot. So we're going to use this analysis on both. So Let's just use it on the teapot and the Parkman. Um, we'll determine our height above free water level at the very end of this analysis. Now, one thing that we need to look at is our hydrocarbon density. If you remember when we processed our saturation height data, we used a hydrocarbon density of 0 0.6 and we used a water density of 1.05. And our fluid type was oil. So now that we've done that, we're ready to start setting some of these other parameters. So what do these correspond to? There, these correspond to specific cross plots we have. And here you'll notice we have three cross plots um, that are prefaced with uh, saturation height. 
and this is saturation height, um, irreducible versus permeability, lever J versus uh, normalized saturation, and irreducible versus RQI. So let's start with irreducible versus permeability. Now, you'll notice when we bring this up, uh, it gives us an error. It says no points data set specified. And that's because we need to bring that data into our petrophysical interpretation. We do this by clicking on the settings of our cross plot. And I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger here for us. And then we, in this drop down menu, we choose our processed uh, capillary pressure points. This is what came out of the, um, out of the flow. So we're going to choose those. And now we see that this graph is populated. And it knows, um, it automatically knows what points columns to, to pull from because it has that very specific naming. Okay, and what we want to do is this is essentially a trend line. We want this trend line to fit our data. Now, we do not automatically fit the trend line here. What, what we prefer to do is we prefer to uh, manually fit this. And this is because if you've ever worked with uh, this type of data before, you know that it's often prone to having some spurious points, um, and we don't want the auto fitter to um, to maybe overweight those points. So we're going to change some of this on our own. And let's see. So, yep, Parkman formation. And the first parameter we're going to set is ASWK here. And uh, this value, um, so the A is the uh, intercept and the b is the slope so we're gonna you know in this case let's let's try moving that um that intercept value down here so let's let's move that down a little bit okay maybe uh maybe we need to steepen our slope a little bit um, and note that the slope must be negative here uh, so that's an important thing to note and you'll notice that as we change this uh the uh, SWIRR from the lever J method and the SW from PC uh, values here change. Okay, now we are going to adjust our next plot. So we're going to choose lever J versus normalized saturation. What we want to do here is we want to capture uh, the approximate trend um, from our normalized saturation versus our lever J. In this case, it looks like I need to adjust my slope a little bit. So I'm going to do that. And I'm really focused on the, uh, the data at our lower uh, lever J values and our, low, and our higher normalized saturation. So this is the data that's down here on the bottom right side of our trend. And then finally, I'm going to repeat this process one more time for the RQI data. So in this case, I definitely need to adjust that uh, intercept down. So I'm going to reduce that value here. Maybe I need to reduce that a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Oh, need, need to tune that in because I really wanted to go through these points right here. Okay, now that we've done that, you can see that we've now adjusted our um, our RQI based irreducible, and we've seen some changes over here. Now, you may be wondering, hey, how come we don't have a match to our saturation yet? That's because we've not yet set our height above free water level. So now what we do is that for our final step, we come in here and we need to set a height above free water level. As a starting point, I like to look at the saturation profile and look approximately where this comes down to 100% uh, wet and that seems like a good starting point in many cases. So I'm going to set that at 8100 feet here for our Parkman formation and look at that. You see that we get a relatively good match right off the bat for both our RQI based and irreducible saturation based. In this case maybe we have a bit of a better fit for the RQI based. Um, and then we repeat this process for the teapot. So, you know, in this case, I'm going to try about 7,700 feet. Um, let's see, see what that does for us. Okay, that gets us a little bit closer. And you'll notice that as we move that down, the saturation profile uh, that we're modeling, of course, looks a bit better. And when you go too high, you'll notice that we get a bit of this reddish colored shading. 
And what you'll do is you'll just dial that interpretation in. Okay, and once you've done that for a few wells, um, or, or once you've done that for each of your zones of interest, you may want to look at this for other wells. So here, if I come over to my well list, let, let's just go to a few other wells and see what this uh, see what this looks like. So here in this well, we can see that using the same parameters, uh, we're actually getting a very good match uh, to our predicted saturation in the Parkman. Go here to the next well. Okay, um, here I've, I've manually overrode the intervals here. We can see that we're using a much deeper saturation height for this well. And we can continue this process uh, for several of the wells. And, and you can see that I've, I've already done this interpretation for a few of them. This one does well using the default values. And then, you know, as, as you do this for a number of wells, you may see some wells where you're just unable to get a match here. So in this case, uh, in this particular well, I'm not able to get a good match uh, here, regardless of what I do with my free water level. This tells me that there's most likely been a change in rock type. Um, and when we look at this on the map and we see where this is to our key well, we see that for this area it's roughly a long strike, but we are uh, a few miles away. So that would tell us that not only do we likely have a you know, varying free water levels across this area, which is something that we would expect. But in this case, uh, here within the Parkman and Teapot formations, um, we do seem to be having a change in rock type as we move across here. So this may uh, be something that we can use to help explain production variations across our area. All right, so that's it for the saturation height modeling. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at support at Thank you.